You are now live with the Humble Prince on Sahara FM Radio. Yeah. And we're back, live at the Humble Prince, Sahara FM Radio. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Again, tonight's show is brought to you by the documentary Finding Fela, uh, it's, it's, which is a very groundbreaking documentary about the great one of the, who can be considered one of the greatest uh, artists that come out of Africa, Fela Nicola Bokuti. Uh, please go to the website, www.findingfela.com, for more information and showtimes. It's playing all over the country. Great groundbreaking uh documentary you definitely want to see it uh the clip you guys just saw was from your 30th yeah. birthday uh fantastic what was that like just uh it was it was fun um i don't have birthday parties all the time but really? i decided you know what this is my 30th so right. let me, let yeah, me do, do it, uh, and it was a dinner you know there were okay. less than 40 people there so it was just so, yeah. intimate yeah. friends yes, nothing yes, yeah. and family my parents were there so. oh yeah, yeah yeah i saw that you know yeah. your dad your dad gave a very uh oh lord warm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, very hard woman speech uh that was fantastic and everything so uh please just to, you know people have been asking i know you uh, you guys have to get out of here especially you know you rush you have a flight to catch uh -huh. and everything um they just want to find out uh how did you get into the radio thing uh Wow, what it's, it's been like. It's, yeah. it's kind of a long story, but I'm going to keep yeah, it short. Please, yeah, um, I went to school to study communication. I oh. attended Oakland University, Rochester, Michigan. Okay. Um, and I got back to Nigeria. I did my NYSC and was posted to NTA in VI, where I was like a production assistant and a junior reporter. Um, there, um, I also st I also basically applied for a part-time job at a radio station, then Cool FM. Got in, and I was hired as a news editor. Um, but one day I walked in to go drop it off, drop the news bulletin off in the studio and I got talking to Dan Foster, who was this American, great American radio great presenter guy, who, yep. you know, uh, started living in Nigeria. So I was curious about him. I started to ask him questions and he was like, oh, you're interesting. Sit here, Mike, headphones, boom. Wow. And I was like, okay, are you sure? Because I mean, I was, I was 20 years old, loud mouth girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, didn't know. I was like, he was like, yeah, sit down, yeah. sit down. So we did the show together the first time, and then the next day I went back to my editing desk and I was editing, and he said, "What are you doing? You're doing the show with me from now on." Wow. And so that's how I was pretty much his co-host on the biggest morning show in Nigeria, and that's how I started. And this was in early 2005. Wow. So yeah, pretty much early 2015 would be 10 years. Fantastic. So, yeah. yeah. When I was in Nigeria the last time, I was able to somebody put me in touch with him, and it was like, you know, just come by the studio. Let's see. Yeah, he's uh, great. He's great. He's very great at uh, uh, down, mm -hmm. down to earth. Man, so you've been doing wow. That was a very um, inspiring. <laughs> so what's the experience been like? And it's how do you been, like it? It's been good. I love it. Um, I have been able to watch the Nigerian entertainment industry grow. Right. It was totally different from when I started. There were no blogs there was no twitter there was no facebook right. instagram all of this stuff um and basically yeah then you know the mu nigerian music wasn't even, wasn't even as popular then um yeah and i'm telling you man nigerian as you guys can attest nigerian entertainment is big yes so i'm yeah, glad it it's really blown up man you go to any of your starbucks anywhere they're playing nigerian music mm -hmm. everywhere man mm -hmm. i mean you go out to parties american djs are playing um nigerian, nigerian music. Uh, yes. music man so um let me let me um um go to top and everything uh I know you, we worked with her this weekend. What was that like, uh, her hosting the event, the uh, Nigerian Entertainment Awards and everything? I'm putting you on the spot, man. But you know, it's <laughs> It was great, actually, because yeah. I, I, I kind of i have met her in different occasions back in right. Lagos. I didn't really get a feel of who she really is. Uh, but after this weekend, I got she's a down-to-earth person, you I know? Swear, yeah. Because Nigerian, you know, celebrity is a different kind of thing. You know, Nigeria, yeah. everybody, you know, every celebrity, you kind of have to like, oh, there's an aura around them. Yeah. You know, so you have to kind of get them outside of their comfort zone to yeah. kind of, you know, relate with them. So wow. I see her as a down-to-earth person, and, yeah. you know, she's cool. Not she's to cool. even... Um, a piece or a kiss up to her or anything. <laughs> no, this this I, we have a mutual friend, big shout out to Eunice, yeah. and I saw them taking pictures. And uh, I had seen her backstage, and I was like, "Oh, you did a fantastic job." And she was very polite. I was like, right. hmm, you know. But again, you know, the whole Nigerian celebrity thing. I like my yeah. little bedju. Let me yeah. just pose. Let me just stay in my lane. <laughs> they just give me the hand, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was just telling how you know I was with Tua Savage and her husband, and we were all just joking. I was like, hmm, I should take a picture of her so I could get Instagram followers. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> celebrity but you need we, we literally just booked the show on saturday and she was very forthcoming emails and everything and you know when i asked her a picture um so we could create the flyer other nigerian celebrities like oh just go to my facebook page and pick one I'm like, Damn. <laughs> but she actually um sent with my man so to attest to that um you know you're very down to earth and big, sh big shout out again to Eunice and uh thank you so much and everything so uh Chinyere, i mean i know we didn't plan to do this interview together but everybody's pressed with time and everything so please tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the efforts you're working on um, so I'm a beauty queen. I'm actually from New York. 
but um, oh. I'm gonna be in Nigeria for a year. Why? At the at the winning MBGM tourism this oh, year. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, so it's like yeah. a whole new experience for me. But I wanna make some. I want to make an impact. Um, I, w- I told you the other time that I was working on my NGO, which is going to be called The Crown Life. And it pretty much focuses on teenage girls and women empowerment, impacting the youth, making a difference, and get girls who will be just as successful as Bimbi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you, know, and, you know, for those who don't know what MBGN is, the most beautiful girl in Nigeria pageant. So it's oh, big. Right. It's like, it is big. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the most pageant. respected pa- yeah. pageant yeah, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. So, yeah. Definitely. Congratulations, uh, and now you're here, and you're humble too. Because th- when we walked into the um, to the award show, she was right there, and you know, can we take pictures? She's like, sure. Like, you know, I, I, sorry, man, I'm starting this campaign. You know, I need to get some Instagram followers, man, for advertising. I know, I keep it real. Yeah, I I could go buy some, like some celebrities do, but I want it to be organic. I'm not buying. Isn't that ridiculous, though? Like, why would you buy? Instagram yeah, why would I followers? buy? It? Yeah, well, but honestly, yeah. some people buy it because. When people see that they have a lot of followers, they then will follow. As foolish as oh. it sounds. It's like, okay, this person has a lot of followers. Why? Okay, let me follow now and I'm find out. Okay. Now, you know, people actually yeah. put it in proposals now right. as part yeah. of your reach. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which so which is, is why money. it is money. You it know, is. there's everybody laughs at Kim Kardashian. She was just GQ Woman of the Year, you know. Yeah. She has twenty two million followers on Instagram. Yes. Yes. That's more than Beyonce, man. Oh, really? Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. I looked it up. Yeah, that that's sounds that's crazy. Big. Um, Unbelievable, man. So uh, with the whole Nigerian um, talk about, so we, we had put up some things um, over the Nigerian Entertainment Awards and everything. Mm-hmm. What, how do you guys see the, entertain, the whole Nigerian industry, you know, blowing up, it's booming and everything, uh, coming up and everything? You know, talk about that a little I bit. I think it, it's going to continue to grow. I think, uh, like Bimi can attest to it, many years ago there were, I mean, a lot of the artists now were not even around then, and the music is bigger now. They're getting paid higher amount for shows. They're, they're reaching more countries in terms, and they do even more collaboration. From what I understand, Wiz Kid is supposed to be doing a collaboration with Chris Brown, for example. Yes, so that's going to break the new ground, and also right. Rihanna. And I was watching his interview with uh, Lise, who was also, Lise. And, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, and and he actually did a song with Rihanna that may be on her album. You know, things like that. So, the, the industry is expanding; it's growing. That's good. Uh, I'm not for one to say we need validation from the American industry for us to be. We are who we are. I always tell the artists, don't run to come and do collaborations in America. You have one billion fans to play with. America is only 350 million people here. So why run to a smaller market when you have one billion people to play with? But they just feel like they need it for validation. I guess it's the next level kind of thing. You know, just focus on what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, Keep making good music. Eventually... The industry will funnel out because there's so much music coming out now, right. like 50 songs I hear per day. At some point, the industry will kind of streamline itself and, and just the cream of the crop will now start to, will start to come out. Right. You well, know? One of the things that you know, we are discussing on social media, the other day, anybody could take this question, is that um, they're seeing a lot of Nigerian artists don't have a lot of, lo- they don't have longevity. Mm. They're just out for a quick minute. And another thing they were saying is that all the music sounds alike. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, I actually said that to like um, right. somebody in Nigeria. I was at the club, and I was like, oh, you know, when I go out, I tend to ask the DJs, can you play different music? And they're like, why? I'm just like, because like, they all start to sound the same to me, so I'm not. Yeah, it's monotonous. It's, yeah. It has the same on the line beat and everything. Yeah. I think that's something they need to I think they ahead. need to finish well, the, the, the reason that happens is because, uh, okay, when somebody comes and has a song, uh, you know, they come with a new and sound it's and, it's, and it's hot everybody wants to make money right. and really right now the best way to make money in nigeria is your shows so if mm. you're booking shows if you're booking three four shows a day i mean right. you know per weekend or whatever it is other people are looking like man am i going to continue singing this blues <laughs> let me <laughs> let me quickly record and tap into right. you know what this person is doing yeah. and everybody starts to follow suit basically that's what happens because uh, really at the end of the day they're trying to make money and at the, at the same time i don't blame them because it is expensive to be in the music industry in nigeria really to start up yes you have to shoot a good video which costs you can't call clarence and be giving him <laughs> granos money now oh, he wants okay, I did about <laughs> exactly you know those those productions yes exactly they they need you know so a lot of people are just like how do we make money quick and fast fast yeah and that's the well. dangerous part of the industry because um she's very accurate on point i mean t- take for example um Inyaya is a very good example when yes. he's a beautiful voice soul singer r&b 
but until they dropped Kokere, yes. nobody was paying attention. Yeah, right. Um, he, same with yeah. Praise. Yeah. Praise is yeah. another artist that performed on weekend. Right. Yeah. He's not as popular, but look at his performance on Saturday. That performance, wow. he was a, I think he was the only one. I was. Like, I was. Exactly. He was the only one that had a live performance. <laughs> but I bet you nobody yeah. probably, half of the people, they don't even know who he is. Oh, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Right. And, you know, Yaya won a reality show and, and it was not just a nigerian reality show it was a west african, african reality right. show in 2008. wow, wow. so he's and he's, he's an r&b singer he has a beautiful voice uh, yeah. so he was singing all these wonderful r&b songs and we were like yeah that's lovely <laughs> but he you know brought out kokere and boom superstar really changed, yeah that's it mm. wow yeah. that's um you know what about okay we're talking about i know we've been talking about the music scene what about like in the the, the movie scene mm -hmm. in hollywood mm -hmm. what do you guys see into that because i know you guys gave um was to that too and one of the criticism that people came mm -hmm. was like uh, the person that won um best supporting actress oh, yeah. for half a yellow sun only had like one or two lines yeah <laughs> we, we, actually that was uh genevieve actually Gen we, right, we, right, we, right. we got that uh flat color but you know the industry in, uh, in Hollywood has grown tremendously when right. i mean 10 years ago they were you know shooting in like vhs you know mm -hmm. uh camcorder kind of production right. now we have very good high quality expensive productions now so the film industry, more than the music, has transformed a lot in the last 10 years. Uh, but in, in regards to the, the nomination for Genevieve and, and all that, but Genevieve is the biggest export in Nollywood. Hmm. There is nothing she's going to put a brand to that she would not be at least considered for for, for, for a nomination. We have a committee that selects those nominations for us. Right. And over the board, they all picked her. Yes. I didn't see her uh, 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 um, uh, a role in that film until when I went to watch the movie, uh, right. watch the film in the movies. Now, yeah. please, can we dead all the rumors? Because people say some people, you guys uh, choose amongst yourselves, get paid. <laughs> Uh, just, I'm, I'm serious. I'm right. putting out there. Okay. Let's just put that to rest. That does not happen. Yeah. I didn't know. Right. We we have a committee that selects exactly. our nomi nominees for us, and we have a voting system. I was even, I, I, we heard some of that rumors, and I told yeah. my team that listen, can we put this thing out, like the whole voting process out, so people can see. The only yeah. only uh, one of my uh, members of my team made a very valid comment why we shouldn't put it out. Like this will mess with some artist brand because there's some popular artists there that have very very small vote counts. You know, and if you put that out, it will mess with their brand. So why do something like that? You know, but if people want to validate, we can show them the old voting logs. Yeah, Chini, I'm not really sure, but she wants to say something. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not your fault if people right. didn't vote for that particular artist. Exactly. Do you understand? So, I mean, if you don't let that stop you, if you that's something you want to do to to prove the the credibility of your brand and right. your your award, you know, the name do it stop don't do the pity thing i mean uh, I, yeah. at the right. end of the day look this is business and i'm right. not gonna jeopardize my business because i'm trying to save your face right right. right so uh guys for the list of um winners um please go to the neaawards.com yeah. um uh there you could find uh you know who won best album of the year that was um Olami day i thought that was well deserved yes. um, hottest single of the year uh, pull over I, I tell people like look at the winning look at the winning yeah and, that's, and argue, that's why i'm yeah. reading it down argue right with me if, if, i mean yeah i don't understand um, man. right people um are, best new act of the year patrick rankin i thought it you know yes. well deserved yes. Yes. exactly yeah. best pop r&b artists of the year tua savage mm -hmm. had a great year yeah, yeah. um you know. female artists of the year you know tua savage won that male artists of the year devito so again i mean you know this is where a, is the you know, exchange of money with the, maybe the video paid us for the <laughs> <laughs> i mean after he won yeah. all the awards known <laughs> exactly i mean he, he won did he win bt he won the bt he won the mt yeah so all of we paid them too right exactly so all of you with all those rumors and you wanted me to ask these questions i'm going to ask and everything so uh we're going to take a break right now when we come back on we're going to um just wrap up okay yeah we'll be right back live with Uncle prince sahara fm radio Two, three, four. I am Bella, who no mortal can ever kill. So let us turn Nigeria upside down. I am the law and will do what I please. So yeah, man. No diplomacy, no compromises, no agreement. He was an original artist made a form where there was no form. When you think of Parliament Funkadelic, Bob Marley's Whalers, Africa 70 was one of the great bands that ever played black music. He has no fear to get thrown in jail every time a single comes out. 
Basically, the idea of Nigeria is that militaries run this place. People were very scared. And then there's one guy, they say, speaking out against military. Straight and progressive, plain government that knows what it's doing. And I knew that this was trouble. Everybody knew this was trouble. There was so much corruption and so much ziggy-zaggery going on. The fellow was a thorn in their flesh. I mean, he was naming names. Everybody say, yeah, yeah. Well, I say I didn't die because I have death in my pouch. I can't die. They can't kill me. He was a synthesizer and he was also a visionary. And at the same time, he is dangerous. This man, this man just caused trouble, 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 trouble for everybody. By the time he comes out of prison in 86, he was like second only to Nelson Mandela. What does it mean to be out there in the street caring enough that you're going to stick your neck out again to be punched, stabbed, arrested? As far as Africa is concerned, music cannot be for enjoyment. Music has to be for revolution. Music is the weapon. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah.